Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Hello, friends. Kirk Henderson and Josh Bo joining you for a Tuesday night episode of Mavs Moneyball After Dark. It is about 1040. I'm joined by Josh Bo. What's going on, guy? I'm doing okay. Uh, this this was a bad loss. Uh, let's just get right into it because I don't... <laughs> trying to feel how apocalyptic i should be about this because i'm not actually like mad but in terms of like the season outlook this was this was a disastrous loss well, There's no sugar coating it so they lost we didn't yeah. mention that yeah, 127 to 126 luka Doncic missed a free throw that would have uh, given the mavericks a lead and then they fouled uh kyle kuzma and he missed a one of two but then made the second one and the wizards basically um for, former maverick delon wright uh, got a steal and ended the game for the Mavericks could even get a final shot off because in the words of my friend, Ben Thompson, Stratechery and um, Stratechery founder and co-host, I wonder if Jason Kidd knows that he can run plays going towards the basket, um, <laughs> which just murdered me. I mean, the Mavericks had four seconds left and they ran a play w- in which they ran a play after Luca had been doubled the entire second half. Luca was going to be doubled. Like, the the elementary stuff that basketball savant Jason Kidd and company mess up on is really odd. Like I'm not like th- this loss is a loss. It's one thing. There was lots of slightly irritating things about this. There are also some really big, um, bright green, awesome like go points that we I would have liked to have built off of more. But we have to lead with the shitty stuff first. I think what you're getting at is the reason this loss sucks is because they go out on the road soon and the record on the road blows. <laughs> yeah, they're 8 and 15 on the road. Seven of their next nine are on the road. And these are the road games Phoenix, Utah, Golden State, Utah, Clippers, Kings twice. All of those teams um, are playoff teams or at least play in teams. Um, Very none competitive of those teams. teams. Yeah, none of those teams are trying to lose basketball games. Let's put it that way. Even Utah. Yeah. Utah has, is trying to win now. Um, and they're a surprising team. Uh, yeah. They have not played the Kings twice. By the way, I think the Kings are now the best offense in the NBA. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, I, the the Suns are, are kind of a mess without Devin Booker, but they've won like a, their three of their last four by like a bajillion points, I think. So... Even if these were lottery teams, you would be scared because the Mavericks' road record is just is just that bad. Um, yep. So they came off that West Coast road trip that was bad. Um, what they went one and one and four, and they came home for four straight. And we we talked about this, and we we're like, they gotta have this has got to be good because after this, it gets really tough. And they went yep. one and three in these four home games. Um, that's I'm just struggling. They're just, they're going to have to do stuff that they haven't done to correct the season. And that's tricky because like, if you're just looking at it objectively and with the data we have up till now, (laughs) there's nothing else that you could say, but except they're screwed, right? Like they're just going to have to do things they haven't done yet this season, which is win, win 
games against good teams on the road. So I don't know. That's this loss was bad. Um, we can get into the, like the actual game. Uh, I know the refing is going to be the story, and I know that the the Luca foul on Kuzma was very dubious. And if I were calling it, I would not have called that a foul. And Where I, I had an issue, with, the refing was an issue in that I felt it was inconsistent and they did not have control of the game. They also made very weird wrong calls that they, there were a couple of times where they just flat out changed it like that. Um, there was like a, a flagrant foul at the end that they changed to a common foul. Like that sort of stuff was where I lost faith in the judgment of the calls. I didn't think that anything was particularly horrendous. I mean, Jason Kidd picked up a technical, which was hilarious. We don't, you know, I always bitch that he he doesn't get technicals. He got one. We don't know what for because you know, yeah. one hand in his <laughs> he wasn't, pocket. Like, yeah, he wasn't no pissed. There's no demonstrative nature of him. Like, I need some fire and brimstone directed at the refs and not at NBA Twitter or whatever he's bitching about tonight from the stands. That it's it's funny because then Luca gets a technical for his like 37th technical of the uh, of the year. <laughs> like these little mistakes catch up with you in a game that's this close. Right, and the Wizards entered this game 20 and 26. Uh, Christophs Przingis, who has been good for them, did not play. They just traded uh, Rui Atramora. So they were down two major rotation players because, you know, they traded for Kendrick Nunn, who's not a basketball, not an NBA player. He did not play in this game. Uh, so they're down two rotation players. And if they're already a 20 and 2016, like a bad team missing two of their best players. Uh, and they shoot 50% for the, for the game. And they were north of 54 for almost the entire game. They actually this pulled is- off a little in the fourth quarter. So, yeah, the refing was sucked. But you know what you do to avoid getting hosed at the end of a game is you don't get yourself tied with five seconds to go oh, yeah. against the oh, team yeah. that you should beat mm. at home. So mm. if you're up by 12 with five seconds left, guess what? A crappy foul call doesn't matter. If you're up by, if you're up by four, if you're up by five, like it doesn't even have to be that much. You know, if you take care of business, then those calls don't come – to bite you. And they did because the Mavericks defense just refuses to get stops. And it's getting, it's getting ugly. It's getting really, really ugly. Well, the wizards, the wizards star player, ostensibly star player and a horrible game, $43 million this year, player Bradley Beal, one of the worst contracts in NBA history. I firmly believe that had a horrible game, tried to lose the game with his play in the fourth quarter for the Wizards. I don't care that he had, he scored those five points. A bunch of people are messaging me. He was awful. His, his turnover that le- that gave Luca that break, which should have won the game for the Mavericks, like that yeah. would have been his fault. And granted, a lot of the other Wizards actually played really well. Will Barton yeah. played well. Like DeLon Wright, of course he played well. Like just the classic DeLon Wright box uh, box score stuffing game. Kuzma is electric. I, I firmly take the L on Kyle Kuzma. He might be the player I am most wrong about in NBA history. Yeah, I really liked time. his game tonight. I, he was fantastic. The way he plays, the way yeah. he attacks. I just yeah. he's and he's been great. He's going to earn whatever deal he gets. Good for him. But the you know the the Mavericks lost this game in the mar- in such tiny ways. And you know I, I'm sorry. I, I have to break to talk about this. I know we're talking. Uh, Grant Afset, the DallasBasketball.com, asked Jason Kidd about the final possession. And this is, he's not quoting Kidd, but he, well, he does here, but he, he, this is Grant Afset, like, interpreting what Kidd said. He said, he explained the intent was to force a double team to create an open look for Spencer Dinwiddie, but they couldn't connect on the pass. Let me be clear, guys, and then I'm going to read you Jason Kidd's quote. There were four seconds left. Yeah. What are you doing, <laughs> Jason Kidd and company? And, Four and, seconds left. Your and Luca intent was and to Lu- create a double. And Luca caught the ball what between half court and the three point line with four mm-hmm. seconds left. So and so here's 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 Kidd's full quote. We knew they were going to double, so we cleared the side, and it was Spencer's ball to shoot. We couldn't connect on the pass. Give the Wizards credit. We knew that with the double team, they would have the advantage, and pretty much all season we played to the advantage. I, they were down by one. Get a look going towards the basket. Draw a foul. Do something. Make it the re- – That play was to set up a Spencer three. For when you're right? up one. When you're down one with four seconds left. 
I'm, I'm more mad about that explanation than I am the loss of the game because it tells me you don't know what's going on. Yeah, and then to do it, I mean, they had it sniffed out if the first attempt at it didn't, didn't well, they had the they had a laptop up on the sideline that basically like this has happened repeatedly and it, and it, during kids career like there was a, a play back um it was back with the Bucks years and years ago that Draymond Green basically after the the Warriors won a game said we knew what play they were going to run because they only won they only run one play and this is what the Mavericks have at this point it's Luca save us Luca save us or Luca make the pass to save us like never do anything great if you have two guys on him. That means that somebody else is open because they had another guy on the ball. I just can't. Yeah. I can't. And I mean, I, Luca didn't have like when Luca caught it each time. Like, I, I need to go back and rewatch it. Like, they didn't have the the floor spread very well at all. Like, I mean, yeah. like Powell was kind of like in the paint. Like, I, I don't. I. It'd be one thing if they if they gave Luca the ball and the floor was spread and he just had to make like one one skip pet. Like, but like it just didn't look like. I didn't like the spacing. If that's what, if your intent is to get Luca doubled so that he can pass it to an open guy, I feel like you could space the floor a little bit better. Like I just, it didn't look good. And then to do it two times in a row and they sniffed it out both times, like that was just that was horrible. And the, for it to be Delon Wright that ends the game on a steal is is hilarious. Uh, Tim Cato uh, in my mentions was like, it's so funny to think he'd be in the rotation on this team after. Me and you, you know, dragged him for most of his long season <laughs> in the Mavericks, and now he'd be what their fifth best player. Um, it's <laughs> it's just silly how these things are. are I was not mad because team. it's like certain things, but it's just that explanation sent me over the edge, and so it's you. like I've, I completely derailed the whole show because that, like, and that's again, just don't. You were correct before I went off on my tangent. Do not put yourself in the position to lose to a team that does not want to win. <laughs> exactly like that's why i can't get mad at the kuzma flow because i'm like dude luca had 41 dude, dwight powell and josh green combined for 38 points uh on uh, if i'm doing my math right uh 21 shots 38 points on 21 shots and you lose at home to an under 500 team like that's that's hard to do man <laughs> Like mm-hmm. we talk about how when Luca has these huge scoring games that uh, you know, like where's the support? Like I'll cheekily post like a box score of the starters, and it's like Luca has a bajillion stats, and then no, one, like the rest of the four starters combined for like three points. Uh, Dinwiddie had twenty, Palo twenty two, Dorian had twelve, Green had sixteen. Like that just goes to show how bad the defense is right now. It yep. is just. And I know that there's going to be someone who looks at the box score, and I, I pre-apologize if you're a friend of mine and you're going to make this point tomorrow. <laughs> uh, and you say something like, well, what are you going to do? The Wizards got hot. You know, They hit 7 of 15 from mid-range, which is a really good percentage. You know, if they, hit, what, if they hit 4 of 15, the Mavericks win this game. And someone's going to probably make that point. Of, oh, yeah, mid-range shots are kind of lucky. You know, that you let them shoot those shots. What are you going to do? And it's like, how about not give them uh, – 24 makes in the paint you know how about you don't let them shoot 15 uh no i'm sorry 17 corner threes the wizards made nine of 17 from corner three like and corner threes are usually a result of bad defense you know giving up giving up a a driving lane and a kick out you know like the above the break threes sometimes you can can concede a little bit in terms of like ah what are you gonna do no corner threes that's a result of bad defense that's not shot variance so don't come at me with with one of these. Well, what are you going to do, games? The Mavericks had could have won this game if they played a modicum of defense. And oh, I'm they... mad again. Oh no, I'm <laughs> mad again. I'm mad again. <laughs> Why are you mad? Friend of the show. He knows who he is. If he listens to this, just shot me Callie Kaplan sharing a Spencer Dinwiddie tweet. For uh, them, it's a showcase. They're over there trying to get paid, not trying to play winning basketball. For a team that has real aspirations and has an MVP, went to the conference finals last year, we have to be better to a man. Giant Uncle Phil gif from Fresh (laughs) Prince. We? We. Spencer Dinwiddie, play a minute of defense, you defensive clown fraud. 
He's the worst defensive player on the team with his measurables. He is the worst defensive player out there, night in and night out. And because he has long arms, he can get away with murder. But I swear to goodness, hearing that guy giving that tweet, that makes me pissed again. This is the kind of shit tweet that I, or uh, a quote that I was thinking about when the Mavericks traded for him, where it's like, what are you doing saying that? Take some responsibility. Say, I have to play better defense. I have to be better to a man. I have to stop oversizing up the defense every dang time. For as, for as many great shots as Spencer hits, he makes some horrendous decisions. And people are probably going to be mad at me about that because he has some good points. But, like, just no, no, stop it. Stop it. No, no, he's part of the – yeah, he's absolutely part of the defensive problems. And you're this is worrying because the start of this homestand, you got Dorian and you got Josh back. I know you're missing Christian Wood, and Christian Wood stands are going to have a field day with how the Mavericks have played in these four uh, – what I think he played these last three games, they're one and two, I guess, in the games he's missed. Um, or actually, did he get what he got hurt in the Atlanta game, right? Am I, I'm, I'm, I'm still on the podcast, but whatever. I don't think they've, they haven't, <laughs> they haven't won games since he's been out. Um, I think they won the Miami game and that was it. And then they lost the uh, Clippers in Washington. So Wood stands are probably going to have a field day with this, but the defense was crappy before Wood got hurt. They played uh, that game against Atlanta where everyone was back uh, and it looked bad. And, you know, you're starting to run out of, like, it's been like, hey, wait for Josh and Dorian to get back. They're back. And they have they lost uh, three out of four games at home with those guys back. You know, is it going to be wait for Wood to get back? And, yeah, you know, I understand. They haven't had their full complement of guys for a long time now. But – they're just running out of room. They're running out of time. And, and uh, it would make sense to me if it was like, you know, they lost to a wizards. Like they should be able to beat the wizards without Christian Wood. You know, they won seven in a row without Dorian and Josh. And it was all against bad teams. I understand, but you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's just, I, I understand that there's going to still be some patience because they haven't had their full rotation, but, they got to draw a line in the sand somewhere and they, and the season is the season is on the brink and you know maxi might come back after the all-star break i don't know that injury prognosis is pretty crazy but like if you're hoping on that like they have to be in a better position like you cannot look at this season and and their record and be like ah if they just had maxi you know like if they just had maxi like they when they had their full roster of guys they were 13 and 13 but, you know championship like, teams also <laughs> slog through tough parts yeah. You know, like the 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 um Milwaukee Bucks are a real good example. Okay. They just got back Chris Middleton from a long absence. Their January and part of their December was awful. I know this because I'm in a, a chat with a Bucks fan who lets me hear every damn game. And you just sometimes you, you just gotta slog through it. And that's what the Mavericks have tried to do, but they don't have the depth. So it's like no. when when you get that guy back. That guy cannot be the re that guy has to be a connecting piece that helps lead you a place. He can't be the piece that you're waiting on to so the run can start. And that's where the matter like there's just been that kind of built-in excuse for a significant portion of the season. But when you have a guy as good as Luca, you would just want the roster to be better. Yeah. And then with the Bucks are a great example because guess what? They were 22 and 8 before they kind of had a bunch of injury problems. Like Guess what? When you're healthy at the start of the season, you think you're a good team. Don't start the season 13 and 13 in your first, uh, you know, however many games that it, what is that? 20, 26 games. And mm-hmm. they talked about it in training camp because the yeah. last two seasons, they've gotten off to horrible starts before yeah. injuries, before COVID, they got off to poor starts and they were like, we got to get off to a good start. Luke is in shape. You know, we all know what we have to do. And they got off to a bad start. Everyone helped, you know, yep. Maxi didn't get hurt. Josh didn't get the, the injuries didn't start till December 9th. You know, they were 13 and 12 after that game, you know, after that game. They were 13 and 13 the next night. Like, you know, Maxi got hurt. When Ma- the game after Maxi got hurt, they're 14. You know, you should be, they should have been 16 and 8. They should have been, you know, 20 and something, you know, whatever. They they shouldn't have been hovering around 500 when the team's healthy. And now they're paying for it when the team's not healthy. And, yep. you know, they could have they could have been a couple of games, you know, they could be five or six games up on under 500, even with this awful stretch, 
if they would have taken care of business at the beginning of the season when everyone was healthy. Um, so that's that's why it's hard for me to feel bad or or, or try to take sympathy, like because every NBA team goes through injuries. They got two guy rotation players back, and they still went one and three on this home stand. Like it's just, I don't know. You know, maybe they get a win. You know, their offense has been doing some some good things the last week or so. So maybe they just get like a lucky, you know, at worst they should get like a lucky shooting game from their opponent. Like maybe Phoenix just shoots 30% and there's nothing they can do about it. And the Mavericks win. Like one of those games is going to come up uh, for them. Maybe that was the heat game where they won 115 to 90. Like they're, they're going to run into a game like that. They're not just going to keep losing forever. But if they want to start stringing together wins and get out of this muck, they just, they just have to be a little bit better. They're like league. They're almost league worst in defense. And some of these teams that are below them are teams that are not, should not even be NBA teams. Like uh, their, their defensive uh, performance over the last month has just been so bad. Uh, They just, they got to figure it out. And I don't think they're gonna, I, I, I'm just kind of past that point now. Um, that's yeah, this real, is where yeah. the problem with this loss. So now, and are they twenty five and twenty five, or are they twenty five and twenty four? Okay, so they're still one game above five hundred. I was wrong about something but I wrote. They brain. will be below five hundred very soon. <laughs> there is a real risk of a panic trade. Yeah, a panic trade would be very bad because it's not that this team has nothing to play for. That is not my intent. But the players that are on the market do not move the needle. Now, maybe you're going to say, maybe there's a player that's not on the market, Kirk, that could move the needle. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I, I'm not going to, but you, you know, some of the trades we've heard about that the Mavericks are interested in should scare you. Okay. Boyan Bogdanovich and Nerlens Noel for a first and whatever the Mavericks would send which is what Adrian Wojnarowski reported. So it's not me just like pissing in the wind would be the sign that we should storm the American airlines center. (laughs) Like it's the Capitol building and we're weirdos because that is just, it's, it's a, it's, it would be such a failure in process. It would be such a short, like, Oh, good. Like, you know, for all, there's just a lot of bad things that I think could happen if they made a panic trade. Now, will they? I have no idea. I'm not a front office guy. But because the rest of the West is such a mud fest, I think you really just have to hope. And then you, you maybe later on down the road, you tell Luca, I'm sorry. We couldn't, we couldn't risk the future. I don't know. It's not fair to Luca, but it's, this is what we've talked about for years. We are staring down the face of kind of the sum of all fears where things don't work out. You know, we've been mad and sometimes unfair. I'm not going to sit here and say we haven't, but this is where not having assets for the better part of a decade in misusing things just so catches up with you. You know, everybody yesterday was, there was a lot of Maz fans that are really mad that the Mavericks were not in play for Ruri Hachimura. <laughs> Number one, I want to tell you, you don't, you've not watched Rui Hachimura enough. Yeah, that's going to be he's okay. not, he's not good. He's a, he's the exact same player that I, I watched Gonzaga basketball. He's the exact same player he was at Gonzaga, which is fine when you're at Gonzaga, but yeah. not when you're in the NBA. Maybe he, maybe he gets better out of that situation, sure. but, but yeah, right now he is, he's not, not good. He doesn't help Dallas's defense. He doesn't really help the scoring, and that's the things they need. Or um, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't help the ball handling, excuse me. Right. Um, but the Lakers basically like they, they use two seconds, which Dallas does for free have, for free. Right. And so it's, it's, you know, if you want that sort of thing, then the Mavericks might be able to pull something like that. They really might, but see now the Lakers are in the position of having to pay Rory Hachimura, which no, thank you. Okay. And it's team building is just excessively difficult is something I keep coming back to, even when I beat up on these guys. So I'm just still of the opinion of what we sort of took way back around game one to 10, where we said, this might be the Mavericks medicine taking year. It just might be. And, and we'll see what they do from here. I mean, I'm, I'm frustrated about individual losses and I'm frustrated about kid. And, you know, I wish we could have spent time talking about how good Josh green looked and about how Dwight Powell really, um, you know, made the most of limited minutes. But and they we, finally they played him uh, in the fourth quarter when the other team went small. They didn't try to match the small ball for the most part, and 
Yep. He, he played really well in the fourth for the most part, but it's it's tough, man. I, I'm I'm very <clears throat> disappointed in this. Um I could keep know. rambling and ranting, but I don't really think I have any more in me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The panic trade is definitely <clears throat> if they do something small that's involves like their two seconds that they can trade or if they swap player for player, like if they do end up doing the, the THJ for Karis LeVert, like that, that doesn't move the needle for me either way, but that's not going to like make me mad. Um, the only, like if they trade a first for like a role player, even if it is someone that could start like, you know, like a Boyan Bogdanovich, that's just going to be like, this team isn't worth no pushing in. Like this team isn't a, oh, we just need one more guy, you know, yeah. like, they they need an all star. Like they need one more all star, and that's not that's not a trade you can make with the, the the current assets that the Mavericks have. They just they need to wait till they can trade all their first round picks, uh, and just try to strong arm their way into a trade. Despite the fact that they don't have a ton of blue chip talent, the young talent that teams like, um, you know, unfortunately that might mean Josh Green in the future. Well, who knows? Uh, but you know, you don't. You don't trade the, the 2027 first for a 34 year old role player, despite the fact that he would help the team. Like, like w- what is that going to do? That's not going to jump them. They're in seventh right now. That's not going to jump them from seventh to like third. Like they're, they just need more than that. So, you know, it's, it's going to be tough. Cause this is, this is a front office and we know, you know, if there's one thing about Mark Cuban, he does not like to be uh, irrelevant and he does not like to lose. and it's going to look really bad. You know, there's a part of me that wonders like how much does he want to save face? Because if the Mavericks are a playing team with Luka Doncic having an historic season, like there's no more hiding, you know, they've done a pretty good job at PRing and marketing their way past the multitude of, of roster building errors they've made in the last five years. Uh, if they are a playing team and a first round exit, uh, with the season Lucas having, they that's gone. So th- a lot's on the lo- a lot is on the line uh, right now for I think the front office and their credibility. And we know how Mark Cuban thinks and what he cares about. So I don't know. Maybe they do make a panic trade because that matters that much. So well, I, I mean, that's what should, I'm worried about. It 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 should worry people. It should worry people because I think Mark Cuban hates being wrong more than he hates losing yeah that's what i'm worried about yeah because he's well, not gonna be able to hide he's wrong if this no. is a play-in team this season no so. no no we'll see. So, all right uh, let's go out <laughs> on a note of something that made me laugh my ass off that's okay. completely unrelated to basketball but i so, said you know you and i talked about this before we like the last of us tv adaption and we like you like the last yes. of us game you're looking forward to oh, my reaction yeah. to this Saw this tweet, shared it with some friends from, I think it's Jacking Jacking Saint. I can't tell what this guy's handle is, but it says, The Last of Us seems like a pretty faithful adaptation of the original game, <laughs> but I think it was cowardly to leave out the scene where Joel gets killed 18 <laughs> times in the first clicker room and considers getting a refund. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. I don't run out of time, but that's really funny because in that scenario in the first game is actually like that hard. Like that happened to me. And the developers were specifically like, we wanted to make sure the first encounter with them, like, uh, my friend Steve said, up. my friend Steve said, I I stopped playing the game. I never went back to it, and I yeah, just... that, <laughs> they made that part deliberately hard. So that's that's pretty good. Uh, All I right, have, well, this has been wait, fun. You got uh, anything else? Well, I got. I want to share. Speaking of Last of Us, I mean, it's not Mavericks related, but one of my close friends, um, he watched the first episode. And I was like, you're going to watch, and when, you know, the second episode was after the Cowboys game, after the Cowboys lost to the 49ers. And it was a really bad loss Ooh. if you're a Cowboys fan. And he's Ooh. a huge Cowboys fan. And I said, all right, well, you're going to watch Last of Us? And he said, no, I'm going to wait till tomorrow or the next day because I can't watch two horror shows back to back. That gave me a good laugh talking about the Cowboys. So my Cowboys friends listening, uh, I, hope, I hope you can get a chuckle out of that. I love that. God. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so we'll be back Thursday night. Late, late game. Not looking forward to that, but that's okay. Um, mm-hmm. 
Thank you for hanging out with us. Come over to the site. We got a couple of guys pitching stuff now. We've had a little bit of a slower few days, but I was okay with that because I've been sick. But uh, we'll see what's going on. Thanks for hanging out with Mavs Moneyball, your no- local neighborhood lunatics. Uh, <laughs> we don't have any news yet on maybe the feed changing, but I'm probably going to keep mentioning it right up until we do just because I want people to be aware of the fact that they might have to find us elsewhere. This is Kirk Henderson and Josh Bo. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. We hope your week gets better. Go Mavs.